I like you to put one scripture verse on me, young man. Gospel according to Brother John. Not the pastor now, the one in the Bible. And the verse is chapter 11 and verse 40. 4 0. I would have liked to be in your prayer meeting, but I leave Tuesday night for New York. And when you are praying, I'll be sleeping in Nairobi. I'm on my way to Uganda, where in Kampala, where I'll be teaching the pastors about evangelism. Three days and then three nights, a big crusade. Amen. Amen. That's what I do all my years. You find the scripture? Jesus said unto her. I love that. Did I not say unto you. That if you would believe. You will see. The glory of God. So you've got to believe to see. You don't see to believe. That's the natural man when you have to see before you believe. Amen. Amen. I use that principle in Tobago. When they tell me they're going to do something Tobagonian, when they say they're going to do this to Tobago, I said I'm not believing until I see. But when it comes to Bible and God, I believe first and see after. I want to talk to you on the, the whole ambit of that stuff. Christ is never late. Amen. And your situation is not too far for God to reach out and touch. Amen. You know the doctors tell you, hey, hey, you got cancer, it's what, stage five? Go home, make your will up. You're going to die within three months. They don't wrong, you know. That's what the prognosis tell them. But they don't have the final say. <laughs> Come on, amen. Never take what the doctor tell you as documental. If you're a believer, you don't have to take it. If you're not a believer, then you are in plenty of trouble. Amen. Now the Bible gives us this story. True story. I'll come a little closer. Of Lazarus. A good friend. He was always at the home of Lazarus, Martha, and Mary. I have a home I stay in in Tobago. The pastors quarrel with me. They say, Brother Prescott, you're keeping crusade by us. We want to put you in a, a guest house, a hotel, but you're staying by this house. I say, please leave me alone. They're my friends. For years, so I stay there. I have a room, I stay there. What's so hot in a hotel? <laughs> the bed in my house better than the hotel bed. Who was in that room before you went there? No, no, no. I was in Tanzania, Holy Crusade. And I was staying in a guest house, nice guest house. I was by myself. And suddenly one night I told myself, Prescott, it's not good for you to be traveling. All these distances by yourself. Out of the blue. I was in Kenya first, then I went to Tanzania, then I was going to Malawi, and then on to Zambia. It was on a long run. The time I got into Zambia, I had full blown malaria. First time in 31 years, I had the tablet zip. Tablet didn't work. Then I realized what Jesus said. 
He sent them two by two. Amen. It's another young man going with me from New York into uh, Uganda. I'm not traveling by myself alone anymore. I'm too old for that. When I was young, I would take chances. Not now. Are you getting me? The Bible said that Jesus was a friend of the family. Listen, the best friend you can have is J-E-S-U-S. He never lets you down. You could tell him any secret. He keep good secret. Eh? If you don't like what he's doing, you could tell him, hey, boss, I don't like what you're doing. You ain't treating me well. If you go a little too far, you can say stop. Amen. Amen. And you're stopping and say, well, God, forgive me a little bit, please. But you could talk to him. So he was there. He had a special room in the house. And here he was, not even two miles away. Not even two miles. And suddenly, Lazarus got sick. Sickness is afraid that nobody and when you get that you get up this morning you're on top of the world you stretch you had a good breakfast smile and you say this is life yes. by 12 o'clock <coughs> <coughs> by four o'clock your last ride that is life. But praise God with the believer. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ is still alive. Amen. He still heals. He still delivers. Amen. Amen. They sent a courier quick. They knew where he was to Jesus. <laughs> and when he got the message, he said, I hear you. I'm going to come. Once he tell you he's coming, he's coming. Whatever he says he will do, he will do it. He's not a man that he should lie. He cannot lie. He will not lie. He is truth. Amen. There are certain basic characteristics. They call them attributes of God. That cannot change. For I am the Lord, I change not. He doesn't grow old. Look, years ago I had a full head of hair. Look at me now. I used to have a afro. Big look at me now. Clean. Age has eroded it. Come on. Years ago, lady, you were looking, when your husband looked at you, remember when you were 19? You blow a hole in him. <laughs> Look at you today, age. Come on. <laughs> you forget how you used to look in the mirror? Today you ain't said looking in the mirror. <laughs> Come on. That is life. Are you following me? Yes. Amen. Jesus said, I will come. One day pass. Martha and Mary peeping. Can't see him. They walking up and down. I wonder why Jesus doing this. Why? And every single day, by the second day he was gone. Maybe they got picture. Huh? Anybody ever let you down yet? Amen. How you feel? <laughs> eh? Disappointed is a very nice word. <laughs> if you could hold it, you vex. But how an art they could do me this? They live in my house. I help them, and my God, look what they did! Unbelievable! I can't believe. Jesus told the disciples, let us go. He sleeps. 
And I go to wake him up. They say, that's wonderful you're going to wake him up. They didn't know he was dead. He didn't tell them that. He was just taking a nap. And he said, I'm glad for this, that you will see the glory of God. Uh-huh. When things come your way, sometimes there is a divine reason for it. That the, the world may see the power and the glory of God. Remember the Bible says, all things work together for good to them that love God. For sin. And are called according to to his purpose. Amen. Second thing. And when the Bible says all things, it means the good, the bad, and the ugly. We don't want the ugly at all. We could handle the bad, but the ugly, no. But he never allows us to be tested above that which we are able to bear, but will, with the temptation, open a way of escape. I want you to listen to what this point I'm going to make. Christ will never allow the enemy to break you. Amen. He never brings you to breaking point. The reason why a bruised reed he will not break, nor a smoking flax he will quench. We already were broken. He saved us. He cleanses us. He strengthens us. And now he's going to allow the devil to break us? No. Hallelujah. Come on, man. So what happened? <laughs> Jesus said, let's go. And when he was a little way off, they said, Martha, Jesus is come. She took off. Mary ain't pull a muscle. <laughs> In Tobago language, Tobagonians speak two languages. First one, the Queen's English. And the second one is Crockney English. You say it's broken. You come from a certain part of England, Crockney. So when the Jamaicans talking, I pretend I don't understand. <laughs> and I listen then. When in Newfoundland, then it's white people, well, Northeast Canada, where you get all this salt fish from. Brother Prescott, hand me the head. What? What can I give him? You know what, you know what he said there? Pass the egg. Uh -huh. And they drop the H. So it's not a black people business, please. You come from England. Amen. They don't say amen, they say hey, amen. Where you are go? Me I go up the hill. I took no language. It's crop me English. You find it in Antigua. You find it in the Virgin Islands and Jamaica. So when Jamaicans talking, I pretend I understand one thing and I laugh in. I pick up everything they say. Amen. Are you following me? Amen. She said, I'm not going. What an archie come now for. She was vexed, she was peeved. Come on. Just like you. One thing I love about people, they behave the same way around the world. Black, white, yellow, brown. Human being are human beings. Amen. Amen. So she said tight. I could see her mouth. <laughs> she was a good looking woman, but when she got vexed, I've never seen a good looking vexed woman yet. <laughs> Anytime you get vexed, you get ugly. But when you smile and you laugh, ah, you see the beauty in the person. That's why it's good to laugh. Amen. Amen. Good to make people laugh, man. Amen. i tired in Trinidad when you watch on people's face, oh Lord. 
As though they're carrying the world on their back. Uh -huh. If you say good morning, good morning. If they answer you, they bite you like a bad dog. Come on. No, don't do that as a believer, man. Put a smile on your face. Shout hallelujah. Glory. I, I would walk in a store. You'll think I'm mad. I ain't mad. And I look around and I want to know who, who saved. There's one way I want to find out. Tell my friend George Phillips in the morning. I say, I want to, I wonder who saved. You say, how oh, you know that? I say, Shh, wait. It was 8.30 in the morning in the big store. And I look around. Nothing. Look at the cashier right there. And suddenly I say, praise the Lord. She jumped. George Phillips opened his eyes. And down in the back, I hear, hallelujah. I say, ah, I hear the echo. I say, what he you so? They run out. They say, who said praise the Lord? I say, me. I say, give me a five. Bow. I say, I tell you, I will find out. I shake up the whole place. Come on, we have something to praise God for, man. <laughs> Hallelujah. What oh, people are going to know and say, uh, by how, uh, 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 you got to open your mouth. Amen. 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 So what happened? When she met Jesus, she said, Lord, if you were here, my brother would not have died. So in other words, now look at what she says. Look at what the centurion said. He said, Lord, don't come under my roof. But they wanted Jesus to come in the house, lay hand on the person, uh, on the brother, and he's going to get healed. You see how faith operates? One person, you have to lay hand on them. Another person said, just say the word. Come on, come on, come on Amen. If you read the scripture, you're going to see how it manifests itself. Amen. He said, Martha, your brother shall rise again. He said, I am the resurrection. Without me, he cannot get up. I am. Notice what he says. I am. I am that I am that I am. The same one that spoke to Moses. It's the same Christ that we serve and we not only serve him you know i see a lot of things going on on tv and i shake my head <laughs> they're bringing back all the old testament into the church i see it christ under the new covenant you see the new testament in the bible you call new testament in testament or will this is my last and final will or testament. All other wills are null and void. That one is the powerhouse. It is the greatest covenant that God ever devised in his mind. The new covenant. The old covenant is only types and shadows. We have the real deal. God don't dwell in here, you know. In the Old Testament, you see behind in there, was the Holy of Holies. Only once a year the high priest could go in there. And it got so bad, they used to tie a rope around him for dressing case. When the bells on the dress down there, clearly stop ringing, nobody could, they pull him out. You can go, we are Gentile dogs. Come on. They had a place for the Gentiles down in the back. We were the income poops. Come on. The Jews call us dogs up to today. Don't be hard on them. We behave like dogs. Come on. But under the new covenant. Hallelujah. I could walk in the holies of holies. Hallelujah. Come on, man. I'm a son of God by adoption. God don't dwell in here. He dwells in me. He dwells in you. The church 
One is the bride of Christ. When the trumpet sound, marriage supper. The church is a building. If you move all them things, you're going to see bricks. You're going to see red brick, brown brick, yellow brick, black brick, or a mosaic of colors. Correct? Christ dwell in that. And as an individual, I'm the temple of God. Not only Christ dwell in me, you know, the Godhead dwell in me bodily. I'm dynamite, you man. Come on. I don't want to be under the old covenant types and shadows. This is the real deal. I am the temple. You are the temple. Hallelujah. Are you getting me? So when I walk down the road, I carry God with me. When I sit down, God sit down with me. Come on. Adam never had that. Moses and all of them never had that. They looked down to understand what they wrote. They couldn't understand it. Only Abraham. Abraham longed to see our day in the book of John. And he said he saw it. God gave him a panoramic view. He said, look, Prescott, the Gentile dog. Watch him. Black like Aisha Spades. And look him. I dwell inside him. Come on. So you're a powerhouse lady. Yeah, that's right. Huh? I right. going home one night. Twin City. I used to live in Twin City. And they warned me. Because I used to pass through the Savannah. And the fellas tell me, Reverend, you see Takarigua? Savannah? Idiot? Don't pass through the after six. I say, why? They say they rape anything man or woman that passed it. <laughs> So I ain't decided to test it out, not me. I walk in on the government road. If you won't rape me, you're gonna have to rape me there, and then you're gonna have trouble. And my wife, my deceased wife, I used to come home half past 12, 1 o'clock. I didn't have no vehicle in them days, coming from all in the country areas. And this night, after trying to plan, there was nothing. I saw a shadow under the tree. Zip, zip. And I fell about this height, walked straight across and blocked me. I said, my Lord, just the same thing my wife was afraid of. <laughs> Look what happened. I said, what can I do for you? I talk in, you know. But my knees and my pants. <laughs> Thank God for long pants. <laughs> Never go by what your body says. Go by what God says. Let the body shake, but the mouth. Thou art taken captive by the words of thy mouth. By thy words, thou art justified. By thy words, thou art condemned. This. He said, So I would like to get some money. I said, What do you want money for? He said, I want to pay my passage to go home. I don't take a rig over there by the Anglican church over there. I said, what happened? He said, I'm not walking. These were the boom days. I said, I said they're begging people for work. He said, sir, I'm going for an interview tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock. And as he said so, I said, what you need is prayer. And this hand move automatically. Whack on his head. I said, Lord, in the name of Jesus, bless him as he go for the job. <laughs> he take off. I laugh. I laugh. I laugh. I laugh. I don't know. If maybe he said I'm a crazy man. In the dark to be doing that. Or the power of God hit him. You could make a choice. I said, come, I'm going to give him. Come, I give you. Man using bowl couldn't catch him. <laughs> he gone. So I laughed from there right down into Twin City. When I knock on the door on my wife, and she said, what are you laughing about? I said, just where your fear happened tonight. She said, where's the job? And when I relate to her, she said one thing. She started to laugh too because I craziness, man. She said, did you close your eye when you pray? I said, no, the Bible says watch and pray. 
It may sound humorous, but my knees were trembling in my pants. I didn't know if he had a gun one. I do know. But God is God, man. He will make you say some things sometimes that will amaze you. Amen. She said, yes, Lord. I know whatsoever you shall ask of God, he will do it. So she was a mixed bag. If, my, if you were here, my brother would not have died. But whatever you ask of God, he will give you. You can't go by God with a mixed bag, man. Don't do that. Faith and fear cannot live together. Fear is a spirit. Whenever fear comes upon you, you ever notice your reaction? You shake? Ah, come on. Yes. Your belly start to boil. Yes. As do you take sinner, castor oil, and Epsom salts mixed together. You start to rumble. You start to perspire. Air condition on, play school, but you're wet. The reaction is a spirit. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but one of love, power, and a sound mind. So when fear comes, you tell the spirit of fear, get to hell out of here. Move your carcass out of here in the name of Jesus. Don't get me rusty today. I am more than a conqueror. You can't do me anything. Hallelujah. Come on. You got to use strong language. Very strong language. So she left and she gone and called Mary. The master is coming. He called it. She said, come. She ran. She said the same thing like her sister. As though they were collaborating. Lord, if you were here, my brother would not have died. So therefore they recognize that Jesus had power over death. Over sicknesses. Over diseases. Over everything on planet earth. He has power over it. Hear what Jesus says. All power is given unto me in heaven on earth and under the earth Paul says uh -huh, in Philippians under the earth master of three realms the father has handed over all authority to the son at this juncture nothing moves in heaven unless Jesus says so Nothing moves on earth unless Jesus said so. Yeah. Huh? You think Mr. Rowley could have come to power? Or Kamala? Could you think it's your vote put them there? Behave yourself. Yes. Huh? Is Jesus allow it? Yes. Nobody comes to power on this planet earth unless he sanction it. Yes. And when he don't like what you do, he shine his boots on your butt and kick you out. Because he said all power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. This is the power that you have. Whatsoever you shall ask. Whatsoever you shall ask in my name. I will do it. I was in, a, in the Bronx a few years ago. Sit down in the back. It was Sunday school. So I sat down in the back. And the Bajan lady turned to the class. Young people. She said, what's the memory verse for today? And they watched her like they didn't learn it. And she started to quote the scripture. Seek and you shall find. Ask, and it shall be given. A S K. Ask, seek, knock. Come back. When you put them together, is ask. E S K. <laughs> and I sat down in the back there. And she said, Everyone that asketh, receive it. It blew my mind.
vile. As a Prescott man, you are a fool. All these years you're preaching, you didn't understand that. I didn't hear nothing else, and I there nobody in war going on. I said, man, there are three commands. Ask is a command. Seek is a command. Knock is a command. And I said, he guarantee us. That is what I saw. That when I ask, everyone that asked receive it. No discrimination. Come on. Everyone that asked it. If he didn't put that there, then you could say, well, he doesn't have to answer. But the mere idea he guaranteed, no politician could guarantee that. Not one. No leader could guarantee that. Only Jesus, because he said he has all power. Hallelujah. Are you getting me? Not some power, all power, all power. That's the Christ who you serve and he dwells in you. All power dwells in you. Oh my Lord. You think the hydrogen bomb powerful? You powerful. Yes. Amen. Amen. So she came and she said the same thing. He said, your brother shall rise again. Then he said, where did they lay him? Your situation hasn't gone too far. The Bible gives us a story in 2 Kings. They surrounded Samaria with a ring of steel, the Syrians. Nothing go in, nothing come out. Every dog, you couldn't find a dog there. <laughs> when you're starving, dog meat is wonderful to eat. <laughs> What's wrong with eating dog? In China and in the Philippines, you go in the market, you see one, that one. They kill it, they clean it, they give it to you. You eat maniku? Thank you. <laughs> you see how she answered me? You know what maniku does eat? I'll leave you to think about that. I won't tell you. But you eat it with joy. With some nice dumpling. No white dumpling. Cassava dumpling or cornmeal dumpling, man. Uh -huh. A little flour in the cassava. Ah, tastes different to flour dumpling. God. So you just eat manikutu. Why? The Bible says, eat what is said before you ask no question. <laughs> well, listen. They ate every cat. Every rat, nothing moved, they ate it. <laughs> Until a ass head, a donkey head. You have to work three months to buy a donkey head. And to buy the fuel, the dove dung, you have to work seven days. So how are you going to buy the dung? How are you going to buy the head? What you will eat between that three months and seven days? Stew breeze and curry wind? <laughs> this is real. Don't believe that is far fetched, you know. I read the, story, the account of the German Third Army in World War II, surround Stalingrad. Exactly what the Bible said took place there. These two women. Each one of them had a son. They last all that length of time. Deliverance was only 24 hours away. Next day was deliverance. God never let you know. Come on. What did they do? One said, look, kill my son. I will kill my son today, tomorrow you'll kill yours. I mean, lady, you, ha you had to have guts of steel. 
A man will do it, not a woman. Not whole child. That's tell you how bad the situation was. She couldn't bear to watch her son die from malnutrition. His stomach will be bloated. And then after a while. That ain't easy. They bathe him. Clean him. Ma, I'm hungry. She said, all right, son, you're going to get food. And with that razor sharp knife, eat! They clean him. Make tribe with his guts. You think you could do that? You never know what hunger will drive you to. You have to be in it. Lady, you have a nice size now, eh? Lady, <laughs> you're delightfully plumbing. In an extreme situation, No, this is humor. This is real. In Stalingrad, they stood up by the window in the winter. Russian winter is terrible. And they watch a man hobbling down the road. They watch him fall. And they watch him out there a while. And when he stopped wriggling, they open the door, run out with a hatchet, and hack this off. What? What? And go home and cook it. So when the Bible gives you a story, don't think it's some far-fetched business. The human being is the same. Under extreme circumstances, that's why you got to know God yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. The people that know their God, the individual that knows his God, shall be strong and do exploits. Hallelujah. You can't depend upon the brother. This. No, no, no. You must know God yourself. My sheep know my voice. My sheep hear my voice. You got to know God yourself. When the crisis come, you stand up in the crisis and say, The God in whom I serve is more than able to deliver me. You got to do that. The next day when the neighbor, you see, bring out your son, the both of them eat all of that, you know. Good Lord, that is overeating. <laughs> but hunger has no limit. The lady laughs, she said, kia, 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 typical Trini. <laughs> Me, you think I'm so stupid? I shipped my son out last night. Ooh. The lady ball. She put her hand on her head and she go out in the wall. And the king happened to be passing on the wall. He said, Woman, what ailed you? What's your problem? And when he she relate the story, he ripped his clothes. He said, Not in Israel, cannibalism. 24 hours if she they had held on. Tomorrow they, they get all the food. God is not far away, man. Hallelujah. He has heard your cry. Come on. He will answer your cry. Amen. Are you getting me? Amen. When you lose faith in God, you do foolishness. A lot of you young ladies, you do foolishness. Uh -huh. I don't care how educated you are. Two master's degree. $30,000 or $40,000 a month. You're driving a plush car. Or 50 or 60. Yeah, young ladies, you know. 28 years old making that, you know. But they're looking at 30. If 30 catch them, they go on on a shelf. I'm still looking for the shelf. <laughs> they say when you meet 30. And you ain't married. You're going on the shelf. Correct? Come on ladies, you're afraid to answer. So what do you do? The first individual smile at you. You snatch at it. Come on, behave yourself. God has something better, man. Yeah. I said, God has something better. Yeah. Wait, I say on the Lord, he shall send the right person. Sometimes we are working for not enough. <laughs> and the boss and the job say, I could ease the pain, you know. <laughs> you say, I will pay your rent. I 
have nothing up my sleeve. He paid for the first six months. And then a Friday night, you hear knocking on the door. <laughs> you see how things are? You said, fine. I'm a little hungry. Could you make a cup of tea for me? Come into my palace, said the spider to the floor. <laughs> when he finished taking the cup of tea, he said, I'm so tired. He's mm -hmm. acting, acting, you know. Could I sleep on the couch? Take a little rest? Next time is not a couch, you know. No man ain't paying your rent for you. For nothing. Huh? It's a sleep for a sleep. Same as a ride for a ride. Don't panic, young lady, man. Come on. I don't care how tough it is. Just believe God. Deliverance is right there. If you'll only believe, you'll see the glory of God. God has something better for you, man. Come on. Are you getting me? Young ladies, don't allow any man to ride you without license. Pum, 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 pum. That's the license. I'm serious. I see too many single mothers about me, please. One here, one here, one holding there, one holding. Where the father? He gone. He was never there. You only passed the ride. And you're so foolish you're accommodating him. Come on, man. If you are a believer, then stand up for Jesus, man. Yes. Hallelujah. I will not bow. My God is able to deliver me. My God will see me through. Come on. Amen. Amen. So what happened? Jesus said, where you lay? By this time, four days now. You know why he came on the fourth day? The Jewish <laughs> tradition is, this, when the Somebody died. The spirit does stay around for three days. On the fourth day, they go on. You'll see that in some cultures. Amen? They leave some food for the spirit of the dead. You know what I'm talking about. Amen? Amen. you get quiet. Amen. So that's why Jesus came on the fourth day. He's dead. And more than dead. He's dead, 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 dead. And when they went to the cemetery, he said, roll the stone away. I could see everybody. I might do the same thing too. <laughs> the human being decomposing is the worst smell you can smell. Let the undertaker tell you. Worse than a dead cow. A Jamaican fell on board the plane a few years ago, right in Nairobi. I passed by him going to sit down and look at him. I said, You are not a Kenyan? He said, No. He said, I'm Jamaican. I said, What are you doing here? He said, What are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm a preacher. He said, I'm an engineer. I said, Where you just come from? He said, I just come from Rwanda. I said, How oh, it is? He said, Hell. He said, I left because a Hutu tell me that I look <laughs> like a Tutsi. And that is death in Rwanda. He said, when he tell me that, I pick up my things, get a ticket and clear out. He said, that's why you meet me, my wife and children in New York. He said, when I went there, he's a water engineer. He said, I watched the tractor dig a trench, huge trench. And they pushed 5,000 dead bodies down. I said, what do you say? He said, 5,000. He said, this stench for a week, I can't eat. So Trinidad good? Amen. How many people get killed last night? They say nine? He's, somebody tell me nine people dead last night. Yeah? Yeah? They sending a message to Mr. Griffith. 
is a message they're sending to him. That if he bad, they more bad. But then it's time that the church wake up, eh? Mr. Griffith can't solve it. The politician can't solve it. It's the church who will solve it. Hallelujah. Come on. Amen. The answer for Trinidad and Tobago is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The power of God. And God is waiting to manifest himself, you know. He's waiting. Amen. So what happened? Jesus said, roll the stone away. Where's the hindrance? Some of you have a man in your life <laughs> as a hindrance. You are married to him. He's sneaking in the night. Don't say anything. My mother told me, if you want to ever find out what go on, I don't know why she had tell me them things. She had a sneaky suspicion after I get saved that I'll be a preacher. I didn't know I was going to be a preacher. She said, walk the road at 4 o'clock in the morning. She said, 5 o'clock too late. She said, what you see will blow your mind. You try it. You'll see who <laughs> visit who. <laughs> come on. They come in at 1 o'clock and they leave at 4. Nobody see except God. Don't practice that type of life, man. If you're living for Jesus, you live for Jesus. You tell those young ladies, see and don't touch. Hmm. A young lady watched me and tell me, a lady, no young lady. She said, Brother Prescott, if I had a slack screw, I would capsize you. I said, excuse me? I said, repeat it for me. And I bite my lip. And she repeated. I said, you the see a side of me that you never saw. She said, what side? I said, if you had cornered me. I said, you see this? I rearranged your face with my face. She said, oh, you? I said, yes, lock me up after carry me to court. I said, your honor, she tried to seduce me like Delilah seduced Samson. And I decided my salvation is worth more than that. And I rearranged my face, her face. I said, send me to jail. I will preach inside there. Don't mess with my salvation. Don't do that. Come on, man. It's too precious. It's too wonderful. Hallelujah. You follow me? Jesus said, Lazarus, one call. Wake up. <laughs> By my language. Come forth. <laughs> Poor fella, you wrap up and ban up. You talk about jitterbug and he can't move. If these young people see that dance, or oh, that's a new dance. <laughs> the zombie dance. <laughs> mm -hmm. If you see him, he didn't call Adam, you know. If he had only made a mistake and said, Adam, Adam was coming. They said, We know that voice. Adam said, I know the voice. Joshua said, I know the voice. Aaron said, I know that voice. But he did not say Joshua. He said Lazarus. He knows your name. Yeah. He knows everything about you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Whatever the pain is. Whatever the issues are. He's touched. For we haven't a high priest. Which cannot be touched. With the feelings of our infirmities. Ooh. He's the only one who could understand. Because he was wounded for your transgression. He was bruised for your iniquities. The chastisement of your peace is upon him. And with his stripes, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to own way. But the Lord had laid upon him our 
iniquities all. What is your situation? It's only 24 hours away. The widow, the widow woman at Zarephath, she was going to get sticks to make one cake for she and her son. And when they finished, she was going to kill him and then come kill herself. It was her last meal. Everything was over. Murder, suicide. But God knew her heart. She had cried for a long time to him. And God sent the man of God. Make me a cake first. <laughs> and you know the story. That preacher was a big mouth preacher. Big belly. That little boy watching. But what do you mean? We're making a cake first. And he said, when you're finished, he said, go back. And when she finished make the cake and give him, the little boy ran and when he look in the bar, he say, Ma! Me! When Ma run out to the little grains, start to rise. God is a miracle worker. He uses the little that you have. Just a little. Not the abundance that you have, the little. Hallelujah. What is the issue? Tonight is your night. First of all, I've given you a chance. Anybody here not saved? I'm a hustler for Jesus. That's all I do. You're not saved? And you are wrong or you are backsliding? Raise your hand. I must give you that opportunity. I don't know you. You don't know me, I don't know you, so we're an even keel. And the pastor ain't tell me nothing. All right. So everybody here safe. God. You're here and you have an issue that is bothering you. Stand. If you don't have one, that's all right. <laughs> you, let me tell you, in life, Nothing do pass, you know. You might be laughing today, hallelujah. And next year, you're pulling all the hair out your head. Whatever the issue is, Jesus could handle it. I say he could handle it. Maybe your husband giving you horrors. Some young lady giving you thunder, lightning, and rain. Want to teeth your husband. We could stop that. Don't forget, you know, it's seven women to one man in Trinidad, you know. He said, engineer told me I walk on the plane and the young fellow. I say, excuse me. I say, you are an engineer. He said, what on me? I say, you are an engineer. After a while, he said, yes. I said, where you, where you walking? He said, where you call the place then? Your old company. Petrol train. He looking for a job now. <laughs> I say, you're married? He said, not yet. I said, where you study? He said, New York. I said, well, I'll give you a little advice. He'd have three young ladies, younger than you, with a double master's degree. He laughed. He said, no, sir. There are seven young ladies with double masters. I say, he said, no, I'm telling you. They're out there fishing. Why? They ain't poor. They're driving a Mercedes. Huh? When they smile at you, they send shivers down your spine. That is outside there. I say, young man, I'm sorry for you. You had trouble. I said, the first one to invite you out for dinner. They care for fine dining, upscale. <laughs> you want red wine <laughs> or wine like water, whatever you want. She don't drink 
whiskey and those things. Ah. I said, when you finish eating and you pull your credit card, she said, no. No. She said, it's on me. Is the women minding the men? No, you know. <laughs> so the men remove from men to Mariku. <laughs> no. I said, when she paid for that, she go out to her car. She said, could we have a nightcap at home, please? I said, you see that one, don't. I said, forget she, she ain't good. He laughed. From the time they tell you night calf in their apartment. <laughs> Forget how brilliant she is or how nice she is. You follow me? Come. We're sending you home now. Come, come. You're standing, come. God knows your business more than I know your business. Hallelujah. Reach out and hold one another's hand. In line, hold the hands. Good. Good. Come, Bishop. If two shall agree, one shall trace a thousand, two shall trace ten thousand. Three shall chase a million. Amen. Don't ask me what four will chase. <laughs> that is what you call ratio in maths. A higher form of maths. Father, in the name of Jesus, you give us authority to bind and to loosen on earth. We bind the powers of darkness that harass that individual. We loosen them in the name of Jesus. You nasty demons, take your hold off of that person. Heal in the name of Jesus. Whatever the sickness, whatever the issue, heal, heal, heal in the name of Jesus. We break the shackles and we set them free in the name of Jesus. If it finances, oh God, bless them bountifully in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's give the Lord a good uh, note of praise.